Welcome to the Silburn Show. Ladies and gentlemen, today I've got a very interesting and very educational guest, Mr. Andrew from Manhood Academy. Andre, welcome. Hi. How are you doing? Greetings. I'm good, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for coming on the show. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a, a while. Mm -hmm. We've been missing each other from different discussions. Yeah. Different times, you know? We're happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you. And I think also at the same time, everything um, is always the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, as a man who is so very deep and entrenched in his culture, mm -hmm. historical being, mm -hmm. one understand the whole essence of timing, you know? Divine time. Divine timing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so important regarding divine timing as well with what is happening in society now mm. with our boys. Yep. You know? And being with Manhood Academy, you know, uh, before I even go into that, um, when there was a recent spate of crime, I think it was the latter part of last year, well, mm -hmm. it always seemed to be, but there's mm. a massive amount and I was really moved very um, profoundly to mm. do something as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And... I captured a lot of the groups which are out there. There's yep. a leaflet going around with different groups and your group was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I got this list and there was about 25 or 30 different persons on mm -hmm. the list and Manhood Academy, Andrew Black Men, Women with Academy, mm. different ones. And I said, I want to do some Facebook Live with these persons mm -hmm. just to mm -hmm. show them because not everybody have certain experience. Like yep. I don't have certain experience in certain areas, mm. but I recognize that I can learn Mm. from different persons and also use my platform to share mm. the experience to show that there are a lot of solutions out there not just the typical narratives yeah and um and yourself is one of them um that i persevered and uh, to come on the show which is the first one since that period mm -hmm. now in in regards to the whole issue of knife crime and mm. um the rise and the state of affairs and mm. um, one of the things also they talk about the narratives and mm. being the same that the, the media seem to gain in a lot of prominence in this mm. particular area. What, what's mm. your view on that? Because I've heard you on different mm -hmm. media stations as well. Mm. Um, what, what's your view on the media and the whole essence mm. of this whole knife crime? Well, there's an African proverb that yes. says, if you do not welcome the children into the village, yes. they will burn it down to feel its warmth. Mm. Um, so if you remember a couple of years ago, London was burning. In fact, the UK was burning. Yes. I remember there were riots all over the UK, Bristol, London, mm. um, different parts of London, different parts of outer London, yes. simultaneously yes. Um, over a, a, a couple of days. Yes. And that was just the frustration of our young people saying, you mm. know what, you're not listening to us? Mm. All right, we're going to burn this down, mm. unfortunately. You know, so... Um, so you were talking about solutions and Manhood Academy, uh, we come from a solutionary perspective yes. in terms of things. Um, because we do know in the media, um, I've worked in the media for um, some of the real big media outlets um, as a corporate designer for many years. Yes. And we do know drama sells. Um, boring stories don't sell. Mm, yeah. Boring stories do not get people to um, log into their website and join yes. their website or to buy a, a newspaper on the newsstand. Drama sells. So in the scheme of things, gun and knife crime, quote unquote, um, sells, gets people's attention. Mm. We are in the era of, um, of the attention era, yes. I call it, because it's all about social media, getting enough likes, getting enough hits, etc. Um, you know, um, celebrities mm. getting um, the attention of the masses. We're in the age of um, the digital age and we're in the age of the attention yes. era. So um, these things get people's attention. Mm. Um, so if there was a drop in, in, in gun and knife crime, um, you know, we'd have to find something else to, something else. to sell our yes. papers to, um, to get the attention of the masses. So um, it is a, a chronic situation in our community, but I also feel it's self-perpetuating mm. by keeping a narrative going and the buzzword going, gun, knife, crime, mm. violence. It's a self-perpetuating cycle. Mm. Unfortunately, some of our young people buy into the cycle. All right. Mm. So they become programmed by the cycle with the mindset of um, enacting that. We also get that through um, like game consoles. Yes. Have you ever played Black Cops? Mm. <laughs> Have you ever played Grand Theft Auto? 
Um, I mean, I work in a special unit for young people with social, emotional health challenges. A lot of them play these video games all night. Yeah. But what does it do? We know what it does. It was shown in the movie, um, Spike Lee's movie, Clockers, yeah. where the game console becomes reality. Yes. So then it becomes automatic in a challenging situation for an automatic response based on what you've been doing here. Yeah. So all of these complex things um, make up the, the chronic situation we have at the mm. moment. Well, that, that's really profound. And so what you're saying then, um, what is the way of actually switching or flipping that script mm -hmm. regarding the narrative then? If, mm -hmm. if, if the excitement and the buzz of the, of the drama mm. is only there, what, mm -hmm. what can then fill mm. that emptiness, that gap? Very good question. Mm. I mean, we live in an era also of hyper-reality. Yes. So when you're playing, you're playing a game console, that is no comparison to reading a black and white physical book. Yes. Because it's super exciting, right? So, in terms of solutions, what we do at Manhood Academy yes. is we give our young people options. Mm. Okay, the options. Okay, so um, that's a stereotype that's been given to you. Are you going to buy into that and become mm. that as reality? We'll give you mm. some other options. Actually, you've got entrepreneur skills. Mm. I see the way you've got a verbal swag in your language. You can actually make money from that, legally, yes. right? Um, what's your skill, you know? Um, whether you can start washing cars. Mm. You can start by, you know, um, there's one of our young masters. Um, he got onto this idea. I saw him on social media and I gave him a call. Mm. I saw him with a trolley full of water yes. <laughs> right? yes. at Carnival. And then I saw him at another event in Brixton. I said, how you doing, man? He goes, I'm good, man. You know what? I just made, a, I just made three figures, you know. He's like, I think he's like 19. He's like, yeah. I just made three figures today, you know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, what was he doing? He's like, yeah, I was selling. It was, it was that hot summer day. Remember when it was hot over a period of time? <laughs> he just sold water and he made a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. Right? You know, for, as we talk about that, when the recent demonstrations going on in London about Trump and the, the, mm -hmm. this, the thing in the air, the mm -hmm. balloon, yeah. I, I said to some guys, man, if it was a Jamaican in London, they'd be selling mm. suck suck on ice ice cones. There you so go, <laughs> ice cones. <laughs> and, and, and a water. dollar a time, you know, come on. Just capitalize on the moment, <laughs> man. I make a lot of money, you know what I mean? But you know, it's important what you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah, but, so what you're saying, you seize on the the skill set which you have which you pick up on. Exactly, exactly. So giving our young people options. Yes. There's that stereotype. We see it in the music videos, we see it in um, the game consoles, we see it in the narrative that our young people have, but you can have options. You can actually um, consider being an entrepreneur. Yes. Then you're making the good money you're always talking about, right? Mm. Our young people are predominantly driven by making money. So, yeah. okay, let's explore that. What is your skill set? Mm. What is your future goal? We encourage them, yes, um, <coughs> become a future employee, but also become a future entrepreneur. All eight members, all directors of Manhood Academy, mm -hmm. um, some of us work in institutions, educational institutions, mm -hmm. but all of us have at least one business, more times mm -hmm. two or three. I can reel them off, the whole team. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're making I multiple... I which are put up, yeah. yeah. Right, multiple mm -hmm. streams of income, the rich dad, poor dad concept. Mm -hmm. So we just give our young people options in terms of who they can become in, in their higher self. Yeah. So if we break it down, if we go back now then, where did idea then come from? I know you got eight mm -hmm. um, directors, but... Uh, uh, you're, you're, at the, you're at the core, mm -hmm. I see. But where did the idea stem from initially? The um, idea, well, um, as I said, there's, 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 there's eight directors. Yes. And um, our beloved Vanguard brother, um, mm -hmm. Brother Davis Williams, um, mm -hmm. he came out with the spark, the seed, because he took a trip to Gambia mm -hmm. um, with Brother Kehinde, who's another of the um, co-directors, um, and came back. He came up with this idea, I've just experienced rites of passage. Yeah. So he put a call out um, on social media and to those he, he knew. He knew me kind of, I knew Davis at a distance, we'd be at the same events because we're doing the same work, we'll give each other a noble nod, yeah. how you doing? Yeah, right. we'll have a little conversation then we'll depart. So um, he, he blitzed the word out and eight came back, Yes. eight brothers, each of us very highly skilled in our field. Um, we have a bath the award-winning educator in the team. Um, we have a member in the team who works on the streets yes. with our young people. Um, we have one of our young members that works in um, group homes, as they call them in America, or foster care children. Yes. Um, Davis and Albert ran a youth organization um, independently before Manhood Academy. So we'd all be in the trenches working yes. with our young people. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we came together like as a super team. So that's how it started mm. in February 2016. We met in an Ethiopian restaurant in South yeah. London and we just mind mapped and we said, let's do this. Let's be a part of the solution to this problem. And, and if for a young person now who wants to actually get involved with Manuel Kemi, mm -hmm. are you guys reach out to this person and say, I see you, mm -hmm. or do they reach out to you? Okay, well, it happens predominantly parents. Our community mm. are reaching out to us. Right. Um, our community are, are bringing their young people to us. Um, and, um, and not always from dysfunction. Um, you know, not always, oh, my, my young person is um, being excluded, he's having problems, can you help him? No, we have um, healthy families also approach yeah. us. Mum and dad intact in a healthy household um, who just want to upgrade the skills of their son. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, my personal philosophy is with your children, um, you have dad, if dad's around, hopefully, uh, you know, dad's a, a solid, for a boy, that's a, a, a stable role model. Yes. But also uncle, friend, mm. um, a good school teacher, um, people in the community, dad's friend, all of these contribute to, part, to, to the growth of, of mm. the young person. As was in um, ancient times where, mm. um, on average, eight men were assigned to one boy. Um, if we go back to ancient principles of rites of passage, mm. you know. So it wasn't left up to just... The, the direct parents to raise the child. It was the village that raised the child, which is another African yeah. proverb. Now, I want to go back to, because you mentioned rites of passage a couple mm -hmm. of times. Yeah. And for persons, viewers, mm -hmm. want you to break that down a bit. Um, mm. When um, Brother Davis, yes. when he went to Ga Gambia yes. and rites of passage, mm -hmm. break that down a bit. Okay, so rites mm. of pas passage is an, is, it's an initiation. Yes. It's, a, it's initiation from one stage to the other. Mm. Um, I've written a book on it called Sacred Man. Yeah, we're going to um, that later, yeah? What it does, what Rice of Passage is, is it defines the different stages of, of humanity, of, yes. of being a human. Um, and spiritually, in African indigenous culture, Rites of Passage starts from birth. Mm. Birth is actually a Rites of Passage. And death is a Rites of Passage. It's something that is certain. And all in between. So in between... We have um, boyhood, we have teenagehood, mm. we have marriage, we have um, shifting into your eldership yes. and shifting, shifting into your ancestry. Mm. Because in African culture, um, your journey was not done when you passed away. Yeah. Then you became an <coughs> ancestor. Mm. So um, the village, for example, would seek the guidance of the ancestors. We've heard that term, right? Mm. So rites of passage is basically a lifelong journey that we all partake in. Um, it can be to a structure, like being initiated. Yeah. Um, and for those that just um, live their life, they're going for rites of passage anyway, just through the life journeys that they're learning. So it's not an end process, it's just a continuous process. It's a end. continuous process Wonderful. because we know in, in African culture, and not only African culture, Chinese ancient culture, mm. Indian culture, and, and European mm. culture, um, there's life as a cycle, mm. it's cyclical, mm. all right? Ancestry back to birth again. So um, we're just taking on the ancient principles. It's very interesting because everything points to mentorship, you know. Mm -hmm. The whole rites of passage also is mentorship. You're mm -hmm. seeking the ancestors, mentorship, mm. the elders, mentorship. Mm. Um, Manhood Academy is mm -hmm. revolves around mentorship as well. Mm. Your eight um, key um, persons, yes. mentorship. How does then one qualify to be mm. an effective mentor? Because sometimes it is used very mm. loosely. Yeah. But in a tight way mm. and a tight form mm. how do you then how does one qualify to be how does one qualify well yeah. i manage the camera we use the term coaches we're coaches yes all right usain bolt yes. all right the greatest coach mm. on the planet yes okay without his coach who i believe he calls papa or dad yes all right since he was a young boy he would not be the supreme world champion and pro i would say the greatest athlete one of the greatest athletes of all time yes um he needed a coach so we, we coach, we coach our young people. And the criteria, the base criteria mm. is a healthy life experience. Mm. Okay. Also um, to be emotionally healthy in <coughs> terms of your experience. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to kind of um, have some sense of um, where our young people are at yeah. and kind of be in that system of things. You don't need to be in the education system or working with young people, but you do need a heightened sense of, of, of self. Yeah and of the needs of our young people. So that's the base criteria. Yeah. And we are expanding from the eight um, to, to other members that are coming into the family. And it's a holistic, ongoing process. 
and also I guess you have associate members as well. Uh, yeah. Or, or you've got, you mm -hmm. got to be directly involved deeply. Um, associate members. Associate members in terms of the expanded community, mm. yes. Mm. Um, I mean, for example, another philosophy of Manhood Academy is, um, well, I, unfortunately, this culture is, yes. is very easy to work individually. Yes. Um, but we say let's work together. So, um, for example, when we started, yeah. um, we seek counsel from our elder brothers, which is Origin Rites of Passage in yes. South London, yes. um, who have been going for maybe 15, 20 years in terms They're of Rites of Passage. They're on my list as well, Origin. Yeah, yeah the yeah. vanguards in, in Rites of Passage yes. in London, you know. And uh, we sat with them and we said to them, um, you know, give us some counsel. We, we want to start this. We want to build something. Yes. And um, you've got a success model. So um, mm. we sat around a round table with our elders yeah. and, you know, they gave us the blessing and they said, you know, we would suggest this, 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 and this. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's, there's um, West Side Young Leaders Academy, yep. there's East Side Young Leaders Academy, yes. there's Father Figure, there's 100 Black Men, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So we, we view all these organizations as our comrades. Right. And um, you know, there are ongoing initiatives to work with each and every mm. one. Well, that's good. We're going to come back to you after the break. We're mm -hmm. going to pick up on some of the different programs in Manhood Academy mm -hmm. and also Womanhood Academy. Womanhood Academy, as of well. course. Can I never leave out the woman? No. Yeah. The balancer. <laughs> balancer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a quick break and we'll come back when we speak further with Andrew about Manhood Academy and empowering our young men, our mm -hmm. young leaders for the future. Thank you. Thank you. The Manhood Academy is a Rats of Passage program which will literally mould our children, our young boys, into men. The, the why of why we feel there's a necessity that we do that for ourselves is because it must be done. And as a man, the person who's gone through certain issues, not having a father figure in my life, um, even being a father of three children and then going through certain issues with their own mother, there's things that need to be done, you understand? And it's a constant uphill struggle if one man stands alone even if he does consider himself to be a man. Do you understand? So this is not just about our children, but it is about the men also in our community and them standing to be a part of something that we should have been doing a long time ago. Mm. We strongly believe that our slogan is boys are born, men are made. So as a consequence, we understand that, you know, men have to be trialled and tested to earn that title of being a man. Growing up as a young black boy, no one ever taught me that this is the principles or this is what a man should do or shouldn't do. So what happened? The streets gave me their definition, their archetype of what a man is and I lived up to that <laughs> and I failed miserably, you know, made mistake after mistake. Being a mentor, going into prisons, working with young boys today, again listening to them burns our heart. So what we're about to do now, it's it's phenomenal and it's scary at the same time because I've not been through the Rights of Passage programme officially every indigenous culture has been through one but within our culture because of we've been separated exactly yeah. because yeah because we've been separated and, and we've been <coughs> scattered across the globe mm -hmm. we've been disconnected from the roots so we're bringing to our community to our young black boys our nephews our sons our uncles our brothers a rats of passage program that will forge them into mighty men of valor mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Silburn Show. And I've got my guest, Andre, from Manhood Academy, as we explore about the work that he's doing with his organization. And of course, we have been joined by his son, Hada. How are you, Hada? I'm, I'm good. Fantastic. Good, good, good. <laughs> Andre, thank you for... We've got two instead of one, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, this is our protege, yes. um, Hada. Um, yeah, I've got a fly here. You see... Um, I don't know which camera, but um, yeah. this, is our, this is our sons on, on the promo here. So this is Hedda yeah. and two of the other members' sons. So um, they pretty much, um, they're with us. When, when, when we begun this, this, um, this community organization, yeah. they were there, we were in a round table when we were planning things and saying, they, they were playing together. Yeah. They've been at our launch, you know, he's been here from the beginning. So yes. we will say to them, you've got about, you got about 20 years, okay? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so get, get your study on. Because um, you will be teaching. 
Right, I like what you said, it's been here from the beginning. From the beginning, well, just revolving around um, their fathers, our, our little, little well, ones. Well, I'm yeah. glad you said that because he's your son, so therefore he's from the beginning, deep, deep, deep. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, I, I wanted to go back to the whole, um, some of the different programs that you can mm -hmm. highlight from Manhood Academy. Mm -hmm. If you can break down some of them, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's touch a bit, but if you can break down a couple of the programs, um, mm -hmm. that inspiration from the urban rites of passage, yeah. you know, the countries, the tribes, but, yeah. the, the, the f but within the UK, the, mm. the, the fundamental context that it plays mm -hmm. in the UK society as well. Right. So, so um, in terms of rites of passage, rites of passage is an ancient principle, yeah. as I said, um, um, ancient African culture, Chinese culture, mm. Indian culture, all continents and ancient European yes. culture. Rites of passage was a benchmark standard to come into manhood and womanhood. And that has been dissolved, um, not around the world, mm. but in Western culture. Um, yes. Rites of passage, unfortunately for our young people, is joining college, um, getting drunk, you know, mm. um, meeting girls in college or you know on the street party and that's kind of rites of passage yeah. that's kind of um oh i'm an adult now i can kind of do what i want you know yes. but it has no structure and guidance so rites of passage is a structure and guidance into adulthood right all right so um so indigenously around the world this has been um carried out and we're just bringing it back we're bringing back the ancient principles in a modern context mm. for example um, we term it cultural rites of passage or urban rites of passage mm. So, let's take the, the concept of, of ancient Africa again. So, we were in a village setting, yes. our ancestors, um, and um, it was necessary for the men to protect the village. Mm. So, they had, to be, um, they had to be a brother to do that. And also, get out, bring food back to the village, protect the women and the children of the village, sustain the village, maintain the village. We no longer live in that environment. Yeah. Okay, um, we no longer live in a forest or a jungle, but we do live in an urban concrete jungle. Mm. Same principles, it's about survival, right? So we're teaching our young people how to survive, and not only survive, but thrive in the urban concrete jungle, mm. all right? So in order to survive nowadays, you have to learn the principles of how to maintain yourself and your future family. Yes. Also, the social etiquette, navigating different environments. Um, a conversation you'd have in a barber shop chopping up with your boys yeah. is different to how you'd forge business in a corporate setting. Yeah. So then you have to know how to navigate and, and, um, and, and also be al almost be bilingual mm. in how you communicate, right? And this is what we call mm -hmm. the alternative on this parallel world at the same time. Parallel world or as W, people, yeah, yeah W.E. Dubois, yeah. the souls of black folks, mm. that famous narrative that says, as people of African origin, we are split between minds. We have to um, balance our minds between one world and our world, yes. the souls of black folks. Yes. So yes, most definitely, um, I would say all cultures have to do that. I mean, when an Asian um, young person goes home, they speak the culture, of, the language of their community. Yes. But when they're at work, they're speaking British. The so, you know, we all have to yeah. um, culturally navigate the environment yeah. and appropriate that also depending on where we are. Mm. And also you've got this sisterhood, you've got the sisterhood as well. Yeah, womanhood. Wo womanhood. The womanhood, <laughs> which is the sisterhood, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can break down that for me, please. Yeah. Mm. Most certainly today is a very special day because on this day, Saturday, the Womanhood Academy for Girls launched actually, yes. officially. So, um, uh, we call him our equilibrium, our balancer, yes. my art, um, our, the yin to our yang. Mm -hmm. um, so the man at the academy is now balanced because the woman at the academy is launched also. Yes. Doing the exact same principle as us with our, our young girls, our yeah. young ladies. Yes, yes. Um, so it's a special day because they launched today and um, the sisterhood is, is um, putting the work in right as we speak. So therefore what we're talking about is really building the community very strong and balanced. Mm -hmm in balance, building the community up in balance. And balance, fantastic. Yes. Now you've written two books, <coughs> and you, yes. you alluded to one a while ago, mm -hmm. um, Sacred Manhood, From Boy to Manhood to the Divine Masculine, an inspirational book whose title speaks to its message. Um, and your other book is titled Tupac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can sort of highlight the, the first one, what the message okay, is Sacred Manhood. Okay, well, Manhood, yeah. Sacred Man was, was inspired by working with young people. So mm -hmm. um, what I did was I wrote a manual a manhood manual for our young people called yeah. Sacred Man from Boyhood to Manhood to Divine Masculine. Yes. Um, and the book, 
um, which I didn't bring. <laughs> um, yes. I should have. But um, the book actually is, is very um, different to a regular book. So it's not black and white text. It's a full color book, almost like a magazine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with very profound subjects. Um, so if one wants to um, become woke, that's the new buzzword, woke, or yeah. conscious, um, where do you start? Well, you start with maybe looking at your diet, mm. taking a look at certain herbs you could take as a man, ginseng, sopil, metto. So it just gives you the basic guidelines to sacred manhood. And sacred manhood doesn't mean, um, you know, in seclusion, meditating like a Buddhist. Yeah. It's just a mindset in terms of living your life with a sacred mindset. Yeah. And mm. also the second book, which is like a two-pack. Yeah. Um, I wrote that book. It started as just as an essay. And it just turned into a, it's actually thicker than Sacred Man. And that is um, the metaphysical enigma of Tupac Shakur, mm. the Black Panthers and Star Wars. Mm. So what does that mean? Um, so we hit in a rate of about Tupac. And, and, and our, all, I would say um, all cultures, all generations love Tupac. Yeah. Whether you're 16 or 40. So I thought, you know what? There's one thing I know about Tupac. I know Tupac was a panther cub, a black panther cub yeah. when he was younger. Both his parents were Black Panthers, mm. active members. And um, all his extended family, his godmother, um, Asata Shakur, mm. Afini Shakur, Geronimo Pratt. These are greats um, mm. in terms of the civil rights movements. He was surrounded by leadership. Yes. Um, and that was not projected in who Tupac as a personality was. Yes. We got the gangster persona, death row records. So I, I didn't touch on that whatsoever. I touched on Tupac's upbringing um, from, the, from the vantage point of a young person um, raised in the civil rights era. And also touching on the leadership behind him. And the leadership mentorship behind the there. mentorship. I mean, yes. his business manager um, was one of a prominent Black Panther members. His, mm. Um, up until he left for death row and kind of things kind of dovetailed. But um, Tupac had an alternate agenda, which I expressed in the book. He wrote a manifesto, which was not published, called Boss Player. Yes. Which was how to upgrade yourself from coming off the streets or a gang, upgrade yourself legally and legit mm. to be successful. The Boss Player Manifesto, yeah. you can Google that. So um, I put all mm. of this stuff in a book just to say, um, for the inspiration of our young people, yeah. there is more to just being a gangster persona. Tupac was highly intelligent. He was well-read fact to yes. PhD standards in terms of his, his intellect and knowledge yes. and his, his, um, his record of books that were found in his library. So yeah, he was highly intelligent. I believe mm. Tupac was dumbing down to reach a mass, a critical mass yeah. of people, meaning um, our young people on the streets in mm. order to upgrade them into community soldiers. So, so, what, so what we're talking about is something which we spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. about this alternative mm -hmm. universe, this parallel universe. Right. double consciousness. Double consciousness. So we mm. talk about the, the gangster part of yes. Tupac, where many yes. people know, but there's also that other conscious exactly. aspect of Tupac. That compassionate yes. um, love of his community and yeah. love of self. But yeah. Isn't that somewhat, is it why sometimes people find it difficult to mm -hmm. sometimes see maybe gangsters, mm. um, that there's some good mm -hmm. sometime out of even bad boys you know what i mean right. i guess the work that yourself do and many people in that particular area mm. will see <laughs> some gem mm. even in the baddest of character mm. which they want to really work and to find and to mm. pull it out isn't it yeah well good and bad is relative in yes. the scheme of things if yes. we're talking about universal language yes. okay good and bad is relative a lot of um of olders let's say or elder yeah. men that i know that lived that lifestyle when they were younger, um, th they've had an enlightened moment. Yes. Um, a lot of the, the, the men that I work with have actually lived that life and have come out of that life. Now they're teaching young people there's other ways, mm. you know? Mm. But we do know there's a critical um, time span for our young people between the age of 13 and 19, which is when rites of passage is enacted. Yes. That is a time when testosterone rises by 800% mm. in the average male. Mm. Um, in a female, there are estrogen levels and different hormonals that change, which have our young people um, assert their opinion. Yes, yes, yes. All right? Now, if that isn't channeled, um, it will just enact in, in whichever way it enacts. Mm. It may enact in, in, in the form of childhood trauma mm. that is kick-started in their teenage years. And they don't even know why they're angry or upset. They just have this feeling. And that feeling may be enacted in violence. It may be enacted in dysfunction. Yeah. But if that feeling is channeled 
and healed, we have a different type of, type of teenager that manifests. And that's the work that we do. Yeah. Now, before we wrap up, um, I want to just ask one more question. I started it at the start, but mm -hmm. it's something to home in and to zero in on. Mm. What would you say are the four or five pointers, mm -hmm. five key points that can mm. lead to an effective solution mm. in dealing with some of the atrocities mm. in the communities? Mm -hmm. It's a fact mm. that our black boys are mm. stabbing each other. Okay, yeah. it's maybe wider, mm. but in the communities. Okay. What, what would you say are some of some mm. five key factors? Five that factors. Might, yeah. Hadar, you're going to have to help me with this. I need your <laughs> fingers because I'm just going to get off track. So yeah. I'm going to go through five factors. This is the first one, yeah. right? So five factors. Yeah. Um, one of the factors I say, I have this theory. I may well patent this theory. Yes. I call it the Eric Killmonger theory. Is it the first time here? Mm? Is it the first time on the Silver and Show? The Killmonger theory? The Killmonger <laughs> theory. This is, this, is a, this is a world premiere of this theory. Okay. It hasn't been formulated in words yet. It's just here. Yeah. But it's based on the Black Panther phenomenon, that movie yes. that um, transcended just being a movie. Yes. It had so many levels um, towards who we are as a people. Yes. So if we take the archetype of Eric Killmonger, who was um, the antagonist in the movie The mm -hmm. Black Panther, um, we see in that movie, he started, it start, the movie started, he was a young boy, He's playing mm. basketball with his friends, happy, and then something happened. He looked up at his apartment, he knew something was wrong. Mm. What happened? His father passed away. Yeah. From that time, a sadness set in in Eric Killmonger. That sadness manifested as anger as an mm. adult. From sadness to anger. Mm. That is a key principle that has happened to a lot of our young men in our community right now. Um, you know, sadness as a child, where's my dad, um, you know, or, or the many dysfunctions a lot of our young people, and we have experienced as young people, yeah. that, but if, not, if it isn't healed, it may well manifest as anger mm -hmm. as they reach their teenage years, and they may not even emotionally be able to process why they feel that way, yeah. or why they feel they need to do what they need to do. Mm. Um, but if it's distinguished, then it can be healed. There's a process of healing taking place, yeah. but it needs to start early. We start with our young masters, as we call them, from eight years old, mm -hmm. all right? And you'll be surprised the narratives that they have to tell us, Yes. okay? In terms of how they feel and their sadness. And remember, as adults, we are trained to manage stress. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our young people are stressed. Um, and they don't, know, they don't know how to process that stress. They're yeah. just like, I don't feel right. Something about, remember, that they're pure beings when they're tiny little yeah, things. But, yeah. And so when they're experiencing this energy called stress, they're like, what is this? I don't know. And, you know, they're just on autopilot in terms of how they behave yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of stress, educational stress in schools, etc. So, you know, we, we, we teach them from a very young age about how they manage their feelings and mm. emotions. Because if it's not managed and explored, um, it may well explode. Yes. into their elder years. Mm. So and that's one principle okay. that we address in the Manhood Academy. Just exploring your, your feelings and being aware of how you feel yes. and, and, and how you feel about your environment, your family, your community and, and school. The Killmonger theory. This, the Eric Killmonger the Eric theory. Killmonger theory. <laughs> Professor Konsu patent on that one. <laughs> and two? <laughs> number two. Number two, I would hey, say... In, 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 you are you, excuse me, we're on number two now. Let's, two. <laughs> okay, so number two would be, um, I mean, I would say um, we need to really um, police, for a better word, our own communities. Mm. I mean, there's so many government ob objectives. We're putting funding into this. We've got a couple million pounds we want to put into the gun and knife. You know, you know what? Let the community or people that are passionate about um, their community being healthy and whole, mm. let them manage their communities. Give them a payroll. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the, our elder brothers that are redeemed of their ways, maybe they were a leader of, of an organisation, a legal organisation. Now they've got their healthy family, yeah. you know, they've got their own business going. Make them with the knowledge and the know-how how to connect with our young people, manage our young people. Yes. You know, um, we're shutting down youth centres, open back mm. up youth centres. Well, that's, that's interesting, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and also in even patrolling our communities, yeah. our estates. Let the elders do that with that yeah. moral guidance. And I would yeah. say healthy elders. You know, we've got yeah. elders we know that are not emotionally healthy. We're talking about healthy elders, role yes. models in our community. Yes. Mm -hmm. And three? Three. 
All right, you're stretching me now. <laughs> <laughs> three, out of three is Manhood and Womanhood Academy, which yeah. is the archetype. Yeah. We're not the first and we're not the last. Yeah. But, you know, let's be, what does Gandhi say? Be part of, what's, what's the, the solution? Say? Be, the, be what you wish to see. Oh, it's, it's lost me now. What's the, um, be what you wish, be, be the change that you, want you to wish to see, see in the world, see. Yes, yes. which is the mindset of the Manhood Academy. So instead of watching the news passively, oh my gosh, did that happen in Brixton? Did that happen in Tottenham? Oh, this is terrible. No, we're creating a solution. We've created a tangible yes. solution, which is the Manhood Academy for boys and the Womanhood Academy for girls. Being proactive. Now, if I ask you the last question, which is, what is your favorite mantra or your word? Mm -hmm. Would that be it then? I would say most definitely, yes. you know, be the change you wish to see in the world. Be the change you wish because to see in the world. Because then it takes the responsibility back to self. Yes. What can you do? Instead of saying, oh, you in the community, please, can you um, do something? You know, I was at a, a round table meet with the community in Brixton some months ago. And the question was asked, um, you know, what can you do about what's happening in our community? Mm. And I said, what can you do? What, what are you going to do yes. tomorrow? Yes. Why not approach a, a young person in the street that you may see looks misguided and say hi and ask them how they're doing yes. and ask them how they're feeling. Yes. It just starts with one. It starts with the individual before it becomes a critical mass. Wow, that's, that's powerful. Well, listen, um, Andrew. That's that was free, though. We run out of time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, free. <laughs> so that's but good. thank you. But I, I, did that cover you, though? That, I mean, we could go on, but those are they're, tangible solutions. Those are tangible you know? solutions. And I want to thank um, Hada for joining as well for that very um, powerful rendition of having three key points for daddy. Mm -hmm. to make sure he's on track. <laughs> yeah, Hada, he's one of the protégés of yes, Manhood yes, Academy. Yes. We have a few. Yes. He's got a couple of years until he starts um, teaching himself. Yeah. And actually, in summer camp, didn't yeah. you teach a class? Yeah, just this summer he was teaching yeah. a class. So, um, yeah, Fantastic. he's on track. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard Andrew, Andrew from Manhood Academy. And, um, of course, interestingly, you got the sister, sister version. Womanhood with, Academy. With the Womanhood Academy, which started also, launched today, mm -hmm. to make it balanced. Um, the final word which we got was be the change that you want to see in the world, mm. which is what we finished on. But also, we didn't want to take the narrative of knife crime just about that typical narrative, but looking at some of the solutions. There are three points he raised. One which was a Killmonger theory, Eric Killmonger, Killmonger yes. theory. <laughs> and also, the second one was talk about policing your own community, which is crucial. Something I've talked about at different times as one who is a very key um, architect of a neighborhood watch in my community and understand the power of neighborhood watch as well. Mm -hmm. And you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that it is so important that we play a part in the solution instead of actually waiting or asking for others to be the solution. Let us be the solution. So I want to thank Andrea for coming today mm -hmm. and for sharing the work of Manhood Academy as we seek to be a, a platform that share um, what are some of the work that some of the great persons, great warriors are thank doing you. out there. Great warriors. All right. You thank know? you for having warriors. us. Thank you so <laughs> much, Andre. Good, good. Thank you very much for joining the show with Andre from Manhood Academy. To understand more about Manhood Academy, you can look on our website, which is www.silburn.com, or you'll see um, the website for Manhood Academy as well, where you can find out more about them. And remember to like and subscribe to the Silburn Show, and of course on YouTube, Snapchat, yes, I did Snapchat. We're just starting <laughs> Snapchat now. And um, uh, what, what I could, Facebook and all the different social media. Thank you very much. See you next time. Yes, this is Andre Sankofa, known to some as Professor Consu of the Manhood Academy. And I'd just like to say, please like, subscribe on all the social media channels to Silborn TV. All right. Watch this space for great interviews and great content from our community. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.